Well, um, as Mark has uh, pointed out, I've been doing not necessarily too much of OPRA, but certainly a lot of at risk. For 17 years, I was uh, an at risk a trainer and consultant, traveled along 38 countries, and uh, spent all of my time abroad doing training and, and, and consulting. And I did that so because I come from a very small country. In the same way, I'm going to take here in this short presentation, lots of, lots, not lots, but probably one single and very powerful idea out of Ian's presentation. And the same way he, as a Canadian, showed at his presentation screen a bear, I am going to show myself a toucan. And I come from a very small country in, in Latin America called Costa Rica. That's where I live. And obviously, being Costa Rica so tiny, I had to travel, well, all the time. So what's the major idea that I want to take into consideration here, especially having come from with a background in which risk analysis was being done, as once again, Ian mentioned, on one room the people doing the cost analysis for risks, and on the other room, the people doing the schedule risk analysis. They never talk to each other. You can never appreciate, or you can never consider how much appreciation I can show to the very fact that eventually and successfully, Saffron Risk has the ability to integrate these two concepts into a single one. And why is that so important? Well, because first of all, you'll be able to determine the probability of achieving not only the project's objectives in terms of cost and time, but also be able to determine their specific contingencies. Probably you're familiar, and, and this presentation is probably geared more towards people who are new to the scene in quantitative project risk management and probably have never seen the tool, as opposed to people who have already um, skilled in the usage of the tool. And in that sense, determining the cost and time contingencies in terms of your risk analysis is definitely one of the major advantages of these, of doing these whole integrated risk analysis as a whole on one single simulation run. So the other advantage is definitely that you're able to identify the major components or sources of your risks, not necessarily independently for schedule or duration and or cost. You're identifying one single source of risk. And obviously out of that, you will be able to analyze your and do some cost benefit analysis of the specific risk and mitigation strategies that you're trying to tackle down with uh, your analysis. One of the key things that I also appreciate a lot about this tool, it's its ability to, by doing this risk analysis, being able to, to monitor a long time and along the project life cycle, the risks and the changes that are being made along the project uh, duration. So I could say that in order to enhance this idea, there are at least two or three, or even as much as four different approaches to, to to tackle down the idea of the integration of cost and time. This is what I've been seeing in, in the market. And once again, as Ian's mentioned, um, along our experience or along my experience on, on, on risk analysis. On one hand, you could do the cost loaded uh, schedule uh, either through uh, PRA or through Microsoft Project. And then you would be able to use the tool to conduct a joint analysis. The problem with this approach is that your cost line items don't necessarily are going to line up to uh, schedule. And believe me, I've seen many times over uh, engineers on both uh, sides of the force, the dark and the bright side, trying to align to each other. How does cost align to schedule on one hand? And so they'll fill in the whole idea out of uh, uh, um, tricks and and different gimmicks in order to try to artificially and not necessarily smoothly integrate the two major forces of your project. Obviously, this is uh, time consuming, it's laborious. You have on the other side, the way to do it, uh, 
in which you take the results of your schedule analysis and try to incorporate them once they've been performed into your cost analysis. For example, in this case, this is what, where, what I came across many times over, using, for example, at risk, you'd be able to, to take this information out of a simulation you took on, a, on an Excel uh, workbook with at risk on top. You'd be able to then extract a single point of duration and export it to eventually at risk or separate risk or any other tool and try to integrate it somehow. So what's the point? If at the end of the day, you're going to take information from a single point estimate, why are you doing your analysis? Since at the end of the day, you're extracting just a single point into your analysis. There's another uh, obstacle to this. And it's the fact that th th these there are certain time-based distributions for certain cost items that cannot necessarily be correctly uh, matched into your model at that time. Third approach would be to probably merge a PRA or any type of uh, schedule risk analysis or, or even a Microsoft project structure of your schedule and try to move it, for example, to at risk at 7.6. At risk 7.6 had the ability to somehow integrate um, uh, your project into your model, that um, ability is no longer supported by this type of software. So as a matter of fact, you'd, you'd be able to lose a lot of time on one hand. And on the other hand, you'd be able to lose some of the functionalities, for example, hammocks that are not supported by Microsoft Project. And finally, obviously what I want to show over here is that you actually and happily and successfully can fully integrate cost and time from inception in a model that I used to usually describe to my clients on a three-pronged integrated type of model. In other words, as you can see over here, risks is essentially from the conceptual point of view of your project, one idea that is going to somehow compass and cover cost and time simultaneously. It is hard to divide. In other words, you'd be able to see that some of these models or some of these attempts that we have over here before are going to attempt to make a relationship between cost and risks on one hand and risks and time on the other hand. The trick here is not necessarily making a relationship between these costs to, towards risks and these times towards risks, but the trick, and that's what suffering risk does, actually is to merge the information between cost and time on a single type of analysis. So how is that do, uh, done in, in, in practice? You usually would start with a uh, schedule. Could either be resources resource loaded or not? My recommendation, uh, as well as Ian uh, uh, said before, try not to lose too much time on on load with resources, your, your schedule is usually a dead end road. At that point, it takes a lot of time. Identify your resources, either they be time dependent or not. Assign your costs to each one of these activities. You're gonna see in a second that this is the key, this is the center, this is the core of what we do for a real and actual schedule and cost risk analysis integratively. And the way to doing that is, uh, as it would be usual, start with your risk register. In other words, from an intuitive point of view, this is a good starting point for you to start. Do your interviews, assign your risk factors. Uh, in other words, in your risk factors, you're trying to somehow come across with the probabilities in the way these probabilities of your risks and opportunities, I may add, are, are going to impact your activity durations how they also are going to uh, um, going to have an impact if, of your risks if they eventually occur. And create also your cost uncertainties, the ones that are time dependent and the ones that are independent of your time. So what is it that we are achieving at the end of this? Well, the major thing that you'd see is that this cost uncertainty is now determined by time uncertainty. And that obviously means a lot of significant time savings in your process. Let me show it to you. If I were to go at this point, for example, to my 
um, integrated risk analysis. Let me just um, exit my presentation here and go directly to <clears throat> Saffron Risk. You'd be able to see over here that on my cost integration, you'd be able to take all your activities, or in this case, all of your cost lines. For example, this is a, a model that I usually use to, uh, for examples, which is the construction of a port in a major Latin American city, a $4 billion project of uh, construction of a port. One of the major areas of this is a 1.2 million wall construction port. port. It's a major cost line over here. Let me put it this way. For me, if you were going to ask me, Fernando, what is the most important feature that Saffron Risk has overall? I would have to say that overall in the whole software screens that we have over here, that would be for certain this column. This column is magic. This column is powerful. This is the column that eventually allows you to integrate the base cost in this case of 1200 or 1.2 million billion dollars and directly integrated as you can see here to your activities so just by clicking over here i'd be able to integrate it but much more so to an activity and the most important thing that i would be able to do over here is to align a fraction of such an activity that is going to be directly impacted from my variable. Telephone? I'm sorry. Where's my telephone? Sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. 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 I think someone's someone's talking over there. Am I being followed over here? May I get some feedback Carry from on. the audience? Fernando, okay. so, 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 speaking. I, I've, I've muted them. Carry on. Sorry, sorry about that. So as you can see over here, if I were to be able to integrate and change this fraction, I could probably change this to 100%. And that means that the $1,200 that I have over here is going to be totally and directly assigned as a variable cost, depending on the length or the duration of the activity that I have it assigned to. On the other hand, if I were to assign this to, let's say, at a 10% basis, then in this case, only 120, 10% of my 1200 would be directly assigned as variable, and most of the cost would be assigned directly to a fixed base. You can imagine the power of this particular feature over here by the fact that this is the place in which we no longer have to generate two different and alternative simulations, once for cost and once for schedule. And we're going to be able to fully integrating using this particular part of your model. So in other words, by, for example, in this case, simulating my results, and in this case, obviously, I've already simulated them, be able to see that, for example, from the cost point of view, assigning a 100% variable cost or a 90% fixed cost in this case, I would create sensible differences, for example, in this case, on my 90th or my 80th percentile. There's a substantial difference, and there's evidently a power and, and a justification here for doing this type of analysis together. So in order to start concluding among this single and powerful idea that I want to uh, share with you, let me just uh, go back over here. Let me just uh, conclude by adding at the end that uh, beyond the significant time savings, now I can calculate my contingency reserves just once. I don't need to go twice 
or much more times together. I can now identify, for example, and prioritize the factors that are going to impact along cost and duration at the same time through my tornado and my sensitivity analysis, and evidently also my scatter plots that, uh, in this case, once again, Ian showed, would be able to fully integrate and comprehend the integral relationship between cost and time. So that's essentially it, uh, Mark. This is one single idea that I wanted to present about, and I can never um, underemphasize how important it is for us practitioners of uh, quantitative risk analysis. The, the powerful now available tools that we have, uh, in this case using Saffron Risk, in order to be able to fully integrate cost and schedule risk at once. Thank you, Mark.